this far by faith. Think about it. This is the first Sunday of a brand new year. Thank God because we come this far by faith. We're going to go ahead and get started with our devotional service. Thank you once again for joining us. Please open your hearts and your minds for the word. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Fairfield. Good morning. If you could elevate to your feet, please. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Psalms. It'll be Psalms 121. And once again, those that can and will, elevate to your feet. Turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 121. And we will start at verse 1. And it reads, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you would not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel would neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. 
The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. We have read Psalms 121 in its entirety. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and especially the doers of his holy and righteous word. Amen. Amen. Time is filled with swift transition. None on earth a move can stand. Build your song things eternal. Just hold to God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. All the people who hold to his hand. They'll hold to God's unchanging hand. Mothers ought to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Mothers ought to hold. Come to you right now, Father, asking and praying for your prayers and your blessings, your grace and your mercy toward us, Father. Dear God, we know that we're not worthy of anything, Father God, but we know that with every new day you give us, Father, there's new grace and there's new mercy. And for this, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Father, we ask and pray that you would make your presence known in this place today, Father. This place called Fairfield Baptist Church, Father. We ask and pray that you would lift up this congregation, Father God. And we also ask and pray, Father, that you would bless the pastor of this house, Father God, Pastor Eric George Vickers, Father. Lift him up today, Father God, that the word may be in him today, Father God, that we might get the spiritual food that we need. Lord, this world is in a desecrated place, Father God. But we know, Lord Jesus Christ, that you got all power in the palm of your hands, Father. So we just lean on you right now, Father God, asking and praying that you will lead us, guide us, direct our paths, Father God, because you know all about it, Father. We love you, Father. We praise you. We magnify your holy name. And it's for this day, Lord, we ask and pray for all of your prayers and blessings, your grace and your mercy. Father, we honor you. Amen, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You are the whole God of change. We don't want y'all to stop right there. Amen. I feel all right. I feel all right. I feel all right.
New Year. God has been good to us, allowed us to see the first Sunday in 2024. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Oh, uh, he has blessed you. He has kept you 365 days. He has given you brand new mercies each and every day. He's continued to protect you and provide it for you. He kept you. He sustained you. Oh, and that's all the praise God get. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory to your name, Father. Bless you. Thank you, Lord. for allowing us to come to his house of worship one more time, but we thank God for your presence today. We thank God especially for those who are worshiping with us for the very first or second time. And if that is you, if you don't mind, just wave your hand, let us see you. Praise God, hallelujah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To God be the glory. On behalf of our, our dynamic pastor, Pastor Eric Vickers, and the Fairfield family, we extend to you a very heartfelt welcome. Thank you so very much for choosing to welcome fellowship with us today. Because you could have decided to go somewhere else, but God led you here for that. We are grateful. And thank you for coming. Now, if you're standing by someone who waved their hand and this is their first and second time, if you don't mind, take your phone out and ask them if it's okay if you can take a selfie with them so that we can show the whole world how we worship here in Fairfield. And hashtag it, look at my new friend. And then hashtag and say, they may become a member today. Or they may come to know Christ. Or oh, they may come to join the church. Who knows? Again, thank you so much. Because you are here, there's a song written just for you. Fairfield, let's give our first time worshipers a big welcome.
got no words left, just say, oh. Let all of God's people say amen. Let all of God's people say amen. Would you join me today in celebrating with our baptism candidates? There we go. Amen. We rejoice today as we prepare to make your certificate presentations to you. When I call your name, would you come forward? Ms. Heads, Jayla Heads. Your grandfather was in the pool with you today. What an awesome experience. Certificate of baptism. This certifies that Jahila Heads was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. On the 7th day of January 2024, Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers Sr. Pastor, congratulations to you. <laughs> Kenneth Carter. Certificate of Baptism. This certifies that Kenneth Carter was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the 7th day of January 2024, Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers Sr. Pastor, congratulations, my brother. God bless you. Thomas Rivers. This certifies that Thomas Rivers was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the 7th day of January 2024, Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers, pastor. Congratulations, my brother. And Sean Williams, Jr. This certifies that Rashawn Williams Jr. was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the seventh day of January 2024, Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers Sr. Pastor, congratulations. He's fly too. Once again, can we celebrate with our candidates? Amen. Amen. We praise God for them for their public profession of faith. We also had the privilege this morning of celebrating with Dr. Richard Allen Farmer and the members of the Crossroad Church as they baptized three candidates. And what a beautiful, beautiful experience to do so on what marks Dr. Farmer's final Sunday as pastor at Crossroads Church. And so I would encourage you uh, brothers and sisters at the conclusion of this worship experience that if you have the time I invite you to go down the street and celebrate with Pastor Farmer on his final Sunday. Amen? Amen. Uh, permit me to offer just a few pastoral observations at this time. Uh, next Gen will be with us next Sunday right here in the Son's house. Amen. Normally they are in the Family Life Center in their own worship experience, but they will be leading us in our King's Celebration Sunday. And they are already hard at work, and I promise you, you will want to be present to see what they deliver next Sunday. And so we're excited. Uh, the Next Gen team has been working diligently with them, and our young people have been working hard, uh, memorizing their parts. They just finished 25 days of Christmas, and now they are already on to the next thing, and we are just so proud of them. And so we invite you to join with them next week as they celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. King. Also, the marriage ministry is kicking off the year of activities on Saturday, January 13th at 10 a.m. Uh, couples can still register by visiting the church website. We invite you to do so for what promises to be an awesome time of fellowship and growth. And so we're asking all married couples to join us on Saturday, January 13th at 10 a.m. Also, last week we announced that there will be a specially called church conference uh, on January 17th at 7 p.m. I'm asking that you would please make that change from the 17th to the 24th, from January 17th to January 24th here in the Sun's House. And we're asking all members to attend as we present a full financial report. God has been good, and we want you to see uh, with your own eyes 
and hear with your own ears just how good God has been to us. And so once again, please, brothers and sisters, make that change from the 17th to the 24th, 7 p.m. Still a Wednesday, Wednesday, January 24th at 7 p.m. here in the Son's house. Amen. I'm also excited to report that uh, our Mom 2 ministry has agreed to spearhead our Wings ministry at the request of Pastor Vickers. And we, we've, spent, we've spent a deal of time pouring into and investing uh, in our men's ministry, and we thank God for the brothers. They've been doing a fantastic job. They've gone from meeting monthly to meeting weekly for prayer, fellowship, and encouragement. And, and now I believe that it is high time for us to direct attention to the sisters. We can't forget the sisters. And, uh, and while I support the sisters, uh, my understanding only goes so far. And I needed some sisters who understand sisters. And I, I thank God today for Mom, too, who has agreed uh, to spearhead our Wings ministry. And I look forward to a phenomenal year of ministry uh, through the Sisters of Fairfield Baptist Church. I want to thank Sister Amanda Patterson, who has been so faithful and so diligent in leading the Wings ministry. She carried the mantle after Dr. Benton. And uh, she's working and traveling, and uh, she has helped us out. Is she here today? Where, where's Sister? God bless you. God bless you, Sister Patterson. And uh, she's with us today, and she's done such a phenomenal job. And um, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Thank you so much. Uh, we look forward to all that is to take place this year. And then finally, we will resume noon Bible study. We will resume noonday Bible study on Wednesday, January 24th. So January 24th will be a big day. And let me encourage you that if you have not been a part of our Wednesday noonday experiences, I assure you that you are missing out on a treat. Uh, we invite you to come on out and be blessed by our Wednesday noonday Bible study experience. We're continuing uh, with walking through Revelation. And so if you have questions and concerns and fears about the book of Revelation, uh, come on out and have those fears disarmed in Jesus' name. But we look forward to resuming Wednesday, January 24th. For all other announcements, brothers and sisters, we invite you to kick the tires on our social media sites. Check our website, fairfieldbc.org, so that you may stay apprised of all of the happenings at Fairfield Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. It's offering time in God's house. And on the first Sunday of the new year, I cannot express to you just how delighted I am to be in the presence of God. The old church would say he didn't have to let me live, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. As you take this opportunity to prepare your minds and hearts to give, I want to mention to all of our first-time worshipers here at Fairfield, this is the only offering we receive. If you care to give, feel free to do so. We want you to know that you are able to give several different ways, uh, electronically. You can also give physically by way of an envelope. Uh, if you're giving by way of cash or check, if you need an envelope, kindly raise your hand, and our ushers will be delighted to serve you. But as we come to this time of giving, uh, I was, my mind was arrested this week. I was sharing with a friend of mine who was preparing to uh, go to the doctor last week. And now when you go to the doctor, uh, they have you fill out these questionnaires so that they can better serve you on your visit. And I just, I wanted to share some of the questions that were shared with me. Here, here, here's, here's one question. How hard is it for you to pay for the very basics like food, housing, medical care, and heating? The options are not hard at all, not very hard, somewhat hard, hard, very hard, or decline. That was the first question. 
Here's the next question. Within the past 12 months, were you worried that your food would run out before you got the money to buy more? Next question. Within the past 12 months, did the food you buy not last until you had money to get more? In the past 12 months, has lack of transportation kept you from meetings, work, or from getting things needed for daily living? In the last 12 months, was there a time when you did not have a steady place to sleep or slept in a shelter, including now? After going through all of those questions, my friend started sobbing because for not one of those answers did they have to mark hard or not hard at all. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that as my friend was preparing to go to the doctor, they were reminded just how good God has been. M might, I, might I add to the list of questions for you? In the last 12 months, how many ways has he made? In the last 12 months, how many doors has he opened? In the last 12 months, how many times was your heart put back together? In the last 12 months, how many times did you have strength to feed yourself? In the last 12 months, how many days did you walk under your own power? I'm just trying to help somebody understand that all year long, God has been good to us. And here we are on the first Sunday in the new year, walked in under our own power, have the faculty of all of our senses. God has been good to us. And so as we come to this time of giving, we are reminded that we are able to give because God has just been giving to us each and every day of our lives. It ought not be hard to give. It ought not be taxing. Nobody should have to beg us and pump us and prime us. God has been too good for us to forget how good God has been. And then for good measure, not that you needed another reason, but you know that we have been giving into our 4321 mortgage elimination campaign. And at the outset of our giving, our debt stood at $4.3 million. Do I have permission today? I have permission. Well, as it stands today, because of your giving and your generosity and your willingness to trust God, our debt is at $1.9 I'm just trying to tell you, God has been good to us. He keeps on keeping us. He keeps on blessing us. And I made up in my mind, I'm going to keep on trusting him. I'm going to keep on standing on his word. I believe by faith that in 11 more months, all right, some of y'all have been waiting two years to shout, here's your opportunity now. If you didn't believe that God is able, you ought to get on the believing bandwagon now. I'm trying to tell you, exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. Here at Fairfield Baptist Church, we recite our stewardship confession. It tells us what we give, why we give, and the blessings tied to our giving. Let us recite it in concert. I am a cheerful giver and a bountiful sower. I am committed to giving my time, talent, and tithe. I believe that God is the source behind every resource. I believe that God will supply all of my needs and make all grace. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you because you have done just what you said you would do. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to you. The silver is yours. The gold is yours. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. Now, Lord, we pray that you would bless us as we give now. Remind us that giving is about our faith before it is about our finances. And so now, Lord, we pray that you would stretch us in the area of our faith. Help us to see your hand at work, not only in our lives, but in the lives of your church. We thank you 
and we claim every promise by faith that you said belongs to us and we rejoice even as we give because it all belongs to you bless us in our giving as you sustain us in our living this is our prayer in jesus name amen let us now give according to how the lord has prospered us
if the Lord says it. If the Lord says it. You can count on it. Are there any witnesses who can testify he will do just what? I may have to wait, but he'll do it. I may have to keep on praying, but he'll do it. You just keep on trusting, just keep on believing. I'm a living witness. He will do just what? He can't help but keep his word, can't help but keep his promises. He, he will do just what he, what he said. That's a good word in the new year. If the Lord said it. Big Mama used to say, you could put your foot on it. He will do just what he said. He's a promise keeper. He's worthy to be praised. Can you help me praise God for the music ministry today? Amen. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. If the Lord said it, I don't know what he said concerning you, but if he said it, Matthew chapter 4. I wish I had a he will do church this morning. I got some witnesses in here. We're not so cute on the first Sunday that we can't testify. He will do, he will do, he will do just what he said. Yes, sir. Number 12. Reverend Walker, will he do just what he said? All right. I don't need a room full of folk. I just need about 10 or 12 folk who just... All right. <laughs> Matthew 4, verse 12.
you got to excuse me. But you're standing beside somebody who knows that he will do just what he said. And maybe you feel this morning like you can't shout because he hadn't done it yet. Well, if you're waiting on God to do what he said he would do, you ought to shout like it's already done. You ought to shout like it's already on the way. Because if the Lord said it, you can count on it. He will do. I said he will do. He has already done what he said he would do. All right. God bless you. Seven days into the new year, he's already done it. Already made ways. Already fought battles. Already made my enemies behave. He will do. Look at somebody and preach to him and tell him he will do. Excuse me, but I've made a New Year's resolution to make up my mind to praise him. To make up my mind to trust him. I've got enough history with God to know that he will do just what he said he would do. Excuse me. I don't mean to get on your nerves. I don't mean to bother you. But this praise is because I know for myself he will do. Hey! 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 Excuse me! done it I'm gonna praise him till he does it I may not see it right now but he will do four three two one he will do excuse me while I count down four three two one four three two one We got to go. We got to go. We got to move. Now just begin to praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 4. He will do. Dry your eyes. He will do. Go to sleep tonight. He will do. <laughs> yes, sir. Matthew 4. Beginning with verse 12.
Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. If you'll allow me for emphasis again, verse 13, he left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As you claim your seats on the first Sunday of the new year, I invite you to pray with me as we attempt to preach from the subject this question. What if it starts with you? What if it starts with you. It's the first Sunday of the new year. What a joy and what a privilege it is to be here. And within this sacred space, nestled within the confines of these hollowed walls, our dreams, our hopes, and ambitions for the new year. If I were to go out on a limb, I would estimate that right now, in front of me, there are at least 50 new LA Fitness memberships. <laughs> and there are about 100 people who have looked in your closets and said, I'm not getting rid of that because by the end of this year, I'm going to get back in it again. <laughs> Items you've never worn that still have the tags on them because when you bought it, you bought it by faith, not financially. Dreams of new business ventures and dreams of new educational enterprises, pursuing that degree or returning to finish that degree. The new year is full of hope, optimism, dreams, because somewhere within ourselves we realize that if any change is going to happen, that it starts with us. It, it must be born in the mind. It must, it must start with, with us. This begged me to consider that when it comes to the kingdom of God, What if we play a more significant part in what God wants to do in the world than we actually realize? I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the titles that we hold in church. I'm not, I'm not talking about uh, the generational legacies that we hold as descendants of founding members. I, I mean... 
I mean the real kingdom work. What, what, if, what if within each of us there is something magnanimous? There, there is a, a spiritual mustard seed within us waiting to burst forth, to be enlarged for God's glory, for the upbuilding of God's kingdom, and for the spread of the gospel to the four corners of the world. What, what, what if, what if, what if what God really wants to do, what if it starts with you? Long before Matthew 28, Jesus gives the great commission to his disciples before 500 witnesses. Long, long before Jesus walked the Emmaus Road and talked to two men along the way. Long, long before Jesus was crucified and raised from the dead. Long, long before Peter denied him three times before the rooster could crow. Long before Judas betrayed him after dining with him and his brethren in the upper room, long, long before Jesus made his triumphant entry through the east gate of Jerusalem, long, long before, long before he agonized in the garden of Gethsemane and said, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Long, long before, long before he went to Bethany and stood outside of Kennedy Memorial Gardens and called out to Lazarus from his grave, Lazarus come forth, and Lazarus came forth bound. Long before Jesus healed two men that were blind on the side of the road, long before he touched lepers and made them clean, long before he made spittle in the ground and touched a blind man's eyes and he saw men walking like trees and touched them again and he saw men walking clearly long before Zacchaeus climbed up in a sycamore tree because the Lord he wanted to see long long before long before a woman hemorrhaging with an issue of blood reached out in faith and touched the hem of his garment long before Jairus came running to Jesus talking about his ill daughter and invited him to come to his house and Jesus touched her by the hand and said little girl arise long 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 before long, long before Jesus preached parable after parable, long before Jesus went and turned over tables in the temple, long, long before any of that, there's something Jesus did that often goes relatively unnoticed. Long before he walked on the water, long before he fed 5,000 and then 4,000, long, long before any of the great miracles, before any of the great teachings, and any, even before the great controversy of Jesus having interaction with the religious leaders of the day. Long before that, Jesus did something that often goes untalked about. Jesus made a change that hardly anybody talks about. Very early in Jesus' ministry, before it launched, after he was baptized by John in the Jordan, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord carried him away into the wilderness. Jesus was there for 40 days. In the wilderness for 40 days, and he is tempted, the Bible says, of the devil of the tempter. Jesus, the Bible says, Satan says, that one does not live by just bread, but you can, you can take these stones out here and, and you can command them to be turned into bread. I know you're fasting. 
Jesus responds, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the Bible says that Satan takes him to the temple mount and says, Jesus, you ought to jump down and show that you are the son of God because the Bible says that God has given his angels charge over you. You won't even dash your foot against the stone. Jesus says, you shall not tempt or put the Lord your God to the test. And then Satan takes him to a high mountain and says, look around at all the kingdoms of the world. I will give you all of the kingdoms if you just bow down and worship me. Jesus says to him, get behind me, Satan. For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And the Bible says that Satan left him and suddenly the angels came and waited on him or served him. Jesus in the wilderness rejects the temptations of comfort, of money, and of power. The three lusts of the flesh. And around this time, according to the Matthew account, Jesus hears that John the Baptist has been arrested. The Bible says that he withdraws to Galilee. Luke gives us a little more insight as to what happens. That Jesus officially begins his public ministry. He goes into the temple and he takes the Isaiah scroll and reads from Isaiah 61 and delivers the absolute worst initial sermon in the history of initial sermons. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He, he reads from Isaiah 61 verses 1 and 2 and then he begins to preach and the sermon in the ears of the hearers is so bad that they push him to the edge of the Nazarene cliff and attempt to throw him off the cliff. Jesus escapes from the middle of the crowd because he had already said a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his family and his own kin. Jesus was quoting an ancient rabbinic understanding that in order for one to really be a prophet, you can't do it at home. You got to leave. You got to go somewhere else. Here it is. You got to make a change. Jesus understood that the messianic the messianic ministry to which he had been called could not be fulfilled where he was born. In order to fully be who God had sent him into the world to be, Jesus had to make a change, and that change started with him. And might I suggest to you this morning on the first Sunday of the new year that if you brothers and sisters are going to be who God is calling you to be, if we are going to be who God has called us to be, if we're going to live out the capacity that God has entrusted within us, it necessitates that you and I make a change and that change starts with us. Here's what Jesus does. The Bible tells us that around the time Jesus hears about the arrest of John the Baptist, that Jesus moves his home from Nazareth to Capernaum. This is a significant development, brothers and sisters, that often goes overlooked because Nazareth was his hometown. Nazareth was the place of his people. His cousin, Nim, went to school in Nazareth, grew up in Nazareth, had friends in Nazareth, worked his first job at McDonald's in Nazareth. Everybody knew Jesus, Joseph's boy in Nazareth. But because the purpose on his life was so great, 
because he knew that lives would hang in the balance based upon the decision that he made to step out on faith and live for God, it demanded that he make a change. And so he leaves Nazareth and he moves from Nazareth to Capernaum. It was not an accident, brothers and sisters, that Jesus chose Capernaum. In fact, I would argue that it was very strategic that Jesus chose Capernaum to be his home base. Capernaum was a very important place in this area of the Roman province. It was a major trade route. Capernaum was right off the Sea of Galilee. There was a lot of money coming into Capernaum, but not only that, it was an intersection of a great, a vast, diverse amount of people. All kind of people traveled through Capernaum because there was a major Roman road. The Via Maris was right there in the middle of Capernaum, which meant that Jesus would be right smack dab in the middle of all kinds of people from various backgrounds. It would have made for a wonderful opportunity to diversify his conversations. It would have been an awesome way to, to broaden his own personal horizons, to meet people that he would not have met in Nazareth, to have conversations that he could not have had in Nazareth. Nazareth was too small, not just geographically, but the mindset of people was too too small to handle the large assignment that was on Jesus's life in order for Jesus to be who God sent him to be who God created him to be he could not stay in Nazareth he had to move to a place that would have been a little more open and a little more receptive to new ideas emerging thoughts to to new ways of thinking he he moved strategically to Capernaum Capernaum was not just a major place financially for Rome, but it was a beautiful place. I've always said that if I, if I had to struggle, I would like to not have to look at snow and ice. But if I got a struggle in life, I want to be able to, to see some palm trees and I don't want to struggle, but if I have to struggle, I want to be close to some water. I want to, I want to be in a place where I can get a frozen Miami Vice. I want, to, I want to be in a place where I can rent a car and put the top down and, and let the wind. Jesus moves to... Capernaum, this, this beautiful oasis of a place. And, and not only that, but, but this move fulfills scripture. Because there is something about Capernaum that draws Jesus, not just because it's a beautiful oasis, and, and, and not because Rome has a major road going through Capernaum. But because there is a sense of calling there, 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 there's a sense of suffering in Capernaum. Bible tells us in Matthew and according to the prophet Isaiah that Capernaum was the region where the northern tribes of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulon had settled. On the surface, this does not seem to be significant, but students of history would tell us, brothers and sisters, that this region was accustomed to fighting. We'll go to war with Syria and, and the Assyrians. There was great conflict, and although at one point this area was highly populated, it was a shell of itself. Not only was it a shell of itself in populace, but it was also a shell of itself spiritually. The Bible says that the people were walking in darkness. This darkness is not physical darkness, brothers and sisters. It is spiritual darkness. It has become an apostate state. It seems that God is not present in this area. 
Because those who claim to know God and the ways of God have gone astray. And when leaders go astray, what hope is there for the people? Jesus changes his home from Nazareth to Capernaum. He makes a change, not just because Capernaum is beautiful, not just because the weather is serene, not just because Rome has a road going through the middle of Capernaum, but because God has called him to do a great work in a dark place that needs the light of his glory and his gospel. There are many of us even now at the beginning of the year who we, we've hit the reset button on trying to find our purpose. God, what is it that you want me to do? I've made my New Year's resolutions and this year is going to be different. I have every intention on checking off every box. There's some of us here this morning, some of us here worshiping online. We're still at a place of internal struggle because we're trying to figure out, God, what is it that you're calling me to do? Perhaps that's the wrong question. Perhaps the greater question is not, God, what are you calling me to do? But God, where is the greatest need where I can serve? And brothers and sisters, if you attach your heart to the high-powered engine of servanthood, if you attach your mind and your desire to meeting the needs of people and glorifying God through servanthood, then God has a way of peeling back the layers of mystery on what you have been created and formed and sent to do. Jesus goes to Capernaum. He, he, he makes a change. He, he, he leaves Nazareth. This is significant because, brothers and sisters, Jesus demonstrates in his own life what he is preparing to teach those who will follow him. Watch this. Before Jesus calls any followers... Before Jesus enrolls students into his messianic school, he puts himself through his own academic program. Can I say it this way? He demonstrates what he will demand. He resists the temptation of Satan. And then he makes a change in his own life that will be a blessing to those who will come into contact with him. And can I tell you, brothers and sisters, before you can be a blessing, it starts with you. It starts with your willingness to trust God for a future that you have not seen. What if? What if it starts with you? Jesus leaves Nazareth, he goes to Capernaum, it fulfills scripture. And then he calls, then he calls his disciples. And we shared last Sunday night about mustard seed faith. We talked about the fact that mustard seed faith is not synonymous with just small faith, nor does it indicate weak faith. Nowhere does scripture or Jesus say that if you just have small or weak faith, you can move mountains. That's not what the mustard seed is about. Mustard seed, although it is small, it, it packs a powerful punch. And within every mustard seed, there is the capacity, although it is small in size, it lacks, it has the ability to grow to over 20 feet tall. It has the ability to become enlarged. It's no accident that Jesus is setting himself and his disciples on track to have mustard seed faith. I'm done with my little message this morning. But is it possible that blind Bartimaeus might still be blind? 
Is it possible that the woman who was hemorrhaging with an issue of blood would have bled out? Is it, is it possible? Is it possible that the ten lepers would have died of degenerative dismemberment? Is it, is it possible? Is it, is it possible that the disciples would have never seen Jesus walk on water? Is it, is it possible? Is it possible that the agony in the garden might not have occurred? Is it possible that perhaps the cross might have been circumvented and your soul and my soul would still be lost? Is it possible that had Jesus not made a change, that the rest of human history might have been doomed. But I'm so glad that Jesus understood that it started with him. That the world was waiting on him to fulfill who God had called him to be. And in order to do so, he could not stay comfortable in Nazareth. In order to do so, he could not succumb to the temptations of Satan. But he had to determine within himself that if life is going to be made better for all of my father's children, that it starts with me. I've got to make a change. Not so I can fit into clothes that I'll never wear anyway. But I've got to make a change because God has given an assignment on my life. A charge to keep I have. A God to glorify who gave his son my soul to save and fit it for the sky. To serve this present age. My calling to fulfill. May it all my power engage to do my master's will. I've got to make a change. And so what if, what if it starts with you? What, what, if, what if God is ready to blow the mind of the world through you, but your desire to remain comfortable and paralyzed is halting what God really wants to do in the earth? What if it starts with you? What, what, if, what if the mortgage already would be paid off? But because you're trying to build a house, instead of helping us build houses, God can't do what he wants to do in the timing that he would like to do it because we won't let it start with us. Look at the intelligence of Jesus. I think Albert Einstein was right. Albert Einstein said the sign of intelligence is the willingness of one to make a change. I pray that God sends me an intelligent church in 2024. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not attacking your intellectual acumen. I'm encouraging you to be a people of change. I'm, in, I'm, I'm trying to... Ignite something within you that gets you moving toward purpose, gets you moving toward being who God wants you to be and has called you to be. What if it starts with you? So happy new year. I hope that you pack up every box and move from Nazareth to Capernaum this year. I, I, I hope that through your faith to trust God, despite the rejection of folks around you. I hope that you move to Capernaum this year. I hope that you stop listening to the naysayers. I hope that you stop reading the comments on your posts. I hope that you stop letting folk make you live lower than who God has called you to be. I hope you move to Capernaum this year. I hope you leave Nazareth. I hope you say, if my mama don't go, if my father don't go, if my sister don't go, and my brother don't, I'll go if I have to go by myself. I hope that you leave Nazareth in 2024. Is there anybody here who can testify my Lord, if you can use anything, you can use me. Want me to leave Nazareth? Lord, I go. Want me to go to Capernaum? Lord, I'll go. 
what if it starts with you? The doors of the church are open. You may be here. Not knowing that that one decision can not only alter your life, but the whole slate of human history. I love what one gospel account says. Jesus had gone into a town. <laughs> and the Bible says that he left there because it says he could do no more works there except heal a few sick folks because of their unbelief. Sometimes you just got to go. Sometimes you just got to move. What did Jesus say to his disciples? If I send you to a place and they reject you because of me, don't stay there. What did he say? He said, shake the dust off your feet and keep on going because the assignment on your life is too big to stay in the place that you have outgrown. What if it starts with you? I see you. You may be here today and you're saying, Pastor, I'm ready to make a change. I'm ready to leave where I am to go where God wants me to be. And I know it's not easy. It is easier said than done. Jesus left everything and everybody he knew to pursue the purpose that God had placed upon his life. What are you willing to leave behind this morning? Might I encourage you, don't worry about who's sitting, standing beside you. Don't worry about who might have something to say. And Pastor, you don't understand, folks know my business. They know my people in them. They know the stuff I used to do. In fact, I'm standing beside somebody. We were doing the same thing last night. But you can leave Nazareth today. You can move to Capernaum today. If that's you, you're here. You want a relationship with God. You can be saved today. Main floor, balcony, worshiping online. If that's you, just come on today. Step out on faith. Maybe you're saying, Pastor, I'm here, and I know I need to make a decision. I'm looking for a church home. I'm looking for a place to connect, a place to grow in grace and in the knowledge of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If that's you today, you want to make Fairfield your church home, come on to Capernaum today. Come to a place where you can live out purpose, where you can work out your soul's salvation in fear and trembling. If that's you on the first Sunday of the new year, just come on. Come on, I see you. God bless you. Come on. If you're here, come on. God bless you. Is there another? This is your day. This is your time. God bless you. I see you. Come on. Come on. I'm making a change today. I'm starting over in Capernaum. If I gotta go all alone, I'm going. Come on, I'm waiting on you. Are you here today? Has come over me. I can testify that a wonderful change. Listen, maybe you're here this morning. You're saying within yourself, I know I need to make a decision, but I'm not quite ready just yet. This is my first time at this church. I need to see what it's like next Sunday. 
Don't make the mistake of thinking that next Sunday is promised to you. I'm not in the business of scare tactics, but I do want to be real with you. That all you have is right now. All you have is this moment to make a change. And can I tell you that you don't have to do the work of cleaning yourself up. You don't have to do the work of restarting your own life. That's the heavy lifting. The heavy lifting has already been done for us. That was handled on Calvary. All you got to do is accept what has already been done on your behalf. Jesus took care of that. All you got to do is step out on faith today. All you got to do is come on, put one foot in front of the other and keep moving until you get to the altar. That's all you got to do. If you're here today, I'm waiting on you. If you're here today, I'm waiting on you. Come on. Come on. They're still coming. What better day than today? First Sunday of 2024. Look at your neighbor and ask, is pastor waiting on you? Are you waiting to make a change today?
Can we just praise the Lord together? I'm talking to the changed folks now. I'm talking to the folks who left Nazareth and gone to Capernaum now. Can we praise the Lord in this place today? We rejoice with a host of folks who have made a decision today, who have responded to the call. Let me say to each of you how glad we are that you heard the voice of God speak to you today. And whether you made a decision to choose Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, or to connect with our church family, or you have come for special prayer, we want you to know just how excited we are that the Spirit of the Lord has moved upon your heart to make a decision today. I know that some of you have come for baptism. We praise God for our new baptism candidates. Amen. Some of you have come to connect to our fellowship by way of Christian experience. We simply say welcome home. And to those of you who have come for special prayer, we want you to know that on the other side of communion that we will be delighted to pray with you today. Whatever the need, whatever the concern, we have a God who is faithful to meet you at your point of need. And so our decision time counselors, along with our first impression ministry, will be delighted to pray with you in our prayer room. Amen. I am just so delighted about the decisions that you have made. And I am so excited about what God is doing in your lives. Fairfield, one more time, can we celebrate with those who have made a decision today? The Bible says that the angels in heaven rejoice over those who make a decision and have been found. Amen. We praise God together. We now turn our attention as we prepare to celebrate the ordinance of Holy Communion. We know that there are two ordinances in the church, two observances by which we are mandated to always maintain the ordinance of baptism and the ordinance of Lord's Supper. These two ordinances remind us of the passion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, how he suffered, bled, and died that we might have a right to the tree of life. It is two of the three ways that we ocularly demonstrate the gospel in the worship experience. We demonstrate the gospel first through the preaching of the gospel. We demonstrate it through baptism, immersion into the liquid tomb, sharing in his death and then rising to new life. And then thirdly, we celebrate it by way of the Lord's table, the ordinance of Holy Communion. Let us now pause as we take time to pray and ask God to forgive us for our sin as we have been invited to this table. Lord, seven days into the new year, we already acknowledge that we have sinned and fallen woefully short of your glory. Just this year alone, we've sinned against you enough to never be invited to dine at this table. And yet, Lord, once again, by your grace, we have been able to RSVP. We thank you for the blood of your son that made this experience possible. We thank you that even though we try to wash ourselves, that there's nothing that we could do to cleanse ourselves, to make us worthy participants of your table. And so, Lord, we're simply grateful that your table still welcomes dirty feet. So wash us anew. Purge us with hyssop. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For Lord, we realize that even at our very best, our righteousness is but as filthy rags before you. So God, our prayer is that you would forgive us, that you would cleanse us. And then, oh Lord, if we have ought against our brother or sister, if we have a problem with one of your children, God, we pray that you would enable us to forgive. Because your word tells us that if we cannot forgive one another, then how can we expect to be forgiven by you? Lord, give us hearts to forgive. And give us hearts to receive forgiveness just as we have been forgiven. Now, Lord, we thank you for these elements. Transform them now from carnal to spiritual use. 
And Lord, we thank you that this is merely a rehearsal until that great day of the great feast around your welcome table where we will be able to dine with you before the one who is seated upon the throne. Now, Lord, bless us as we partake together. We give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. which Jesus was to be betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which has been broken for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Let us eat and be thankful. In like manner, he took also the cup saying, this is the New Testament of my blood, which has been shed for the remission of sin. And I will not drink it again with you until I drink it anew in my Father's kingdom. Let us drink and be thankful. The Bible says that after they communed together, that they went into the Mount of Olives singing a hymn. Let's praise the Lord together for his supreme sacrifice on our behalf, suffered, bled, and died, and we might have a right to the tree of life. Amen. Would you join me in thanking God for our deacons today? 
Amen. These ushers and all of those who have served today. To those of you who have responded to the invitational call after the benediction, we invite you to follow our First Impressions ministry uh, to our prayer room where we will give you further instructions about what your decision means. But again, we praise God for you. To all of our first-time worshipers, thank God for you. We're so honored and humbled that you were led of the Lord to worship with us on the very first Sunday of the new year. Amen. Would you join me in praising God for this music ministry? Amen. They sung so well that Patti LaBelle kicked her shoes off today. Sometimes you got to suffer. Amen. Amen. As we rest upon our feet, I hope and I pray that you continue to have a safe and prosperous new year. And that as you move from Nazareth to Capernaum, that you remember that God has called you to do a great work in the earth. May you be inspired to change for his glory. As always, I love you. and There's nothing you can do about it. To all of our worshipers online, God bless you. Thanks to our media ministry for an awesome job today. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, bless her. Praise him. Here below. Praise him above. Heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. God said unto Moses, tell Aaron and his priestly sons, and when they bless the people of God to give them this blessing, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. May the Lord God Almighty bless you in your downsetting and your uprising as you come and as you go in the city and in the field, in your joy and in your sorrow, in your labor and in your leisure. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Until we meet at the feet of Jesus where there's neither sunrise nor sunset. To him be glory in the church now and forever. And all of God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Can do about it. Have a great week. God bless you.